Okay, so this morning we learned about the common sources of where we can get heavy metals. And this afternoon, I'm going to be speaking to you about DMSA and DMPS as binding agents to help mobilize the heavy metals from your body. Okay. So with DMSA, um, the... Hold it. Okay. Um, so DMSA has these two sulfhydryl groups which bind to the heavy metals. Um, it has an affinity to certain metals, especially lead and mercury. It's been FDA approved for the treatment of lead poisoning in pediatric patients with blood lead levels above 45 micrograms per deciliter. It shouldn't be used in anyone who's had a history of an allergy to this medicine and mild neutropenia has been noted um, with some patients receiving DMSA. Therefore, that's why it's always important to make sure you do baseline lab work before you start with DMSA or DMPS. Um, you want to make sure your patients have adequate hydration during treatment. Sometimes you can note uh, some elevated liver enzymes. Um, therefore, that's why you need to check kidney function and um, liver function tests before. There hasn't been any known drug interactions. In terms of pregnancy, it's a category C. For nursing mothers, um, if the treatment is necessary, mothers should be discouraged from nursing. The safety in pediatric patients um, has not, or in patients less than a year has not been established yet. Dr. Kearney and I have given DMSA to uh, children less than one. Some adverse reactions that are common are GI side effects like nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, a metallic taste in the mouth. Um, if these, your patients get these symptoms, peppermint or ginger tea um, can, be, uh, can help alleviate these GI symptoms. Peppermint tea is good for patients who are more hot and ginger tea you can give to patients who are generally are cooler or um, need some warming. Um, so skin reactions can happen in patients using DMSA, uh, neutropenia, and as I already mentioned, liver enzyme elevations. There are some studies that have noted uh, neutropenia, um, and I listed the studies that have noted adverse reactions in the use of DMSA. So in this first um, study, can you guys see the pointer? Uh, neutropenia was noted one subject. <laughs> Um, there is a case report where a patient developed a mucocutaneous eruption. And then in one patient, um, in this study here, uh, with he developed hemolimbic anemia after uh, DMSA because they had G6PD um, deficiency. So this is the case study where a patient developed these ulcers in the oropharynx after completion of a DMSA treatment. So you can note, um, these ulcers like this, or most commonly people will have rashes as the most common side effect or gas and bloating. Okay. In terms of overdosage, there hasn't been any report adverse events that have occurred. There has been a case report of a child who received 185 milligrams uh, per ki kilogram of body weight, and there's no adverse effects that had occurred in this case. So DMSA is bounded to plasma proteins via mixed disulfide formation in the blood. Um, it's, this is what it looks like, and it is excreted, it's primarily conjugated in the kidneys um, because it's not found in the blood. And this is the proposed handling of DMSA in the kidneys. And you can refer to this review article, it's a very excellent review article of DMSA and um, calcium ETA. I put this article up because it's the most commonly re um, referenced article regarding chelation therapy um, at, and the use of DMSA in kids and why it should not be used. This study um, concludes that um, because the IQ scores did not change between the DMSA group and the placebo group, um, chelation therapy has no effect. Um, it has no basis in the tr for treatment. So they did note that it does decrease blood lead levels in kids, but um, the advantages and the, um, did not outweigh um, 
the effects in, for, for these, what, this is what the authors stated in this study. So um, the blood lead levels in this group was 20 to 44 micrograms per deciliter. Uh, most of these children had um, single mother had single mothers who had an average IQ of 80, and their IQs average the kids' IQs average was also around 80. Um, the DMSA lowered the blood lead levels about 4.5 micrograms per deciliter, um, greater than the placebo group, and um, this is the most commonly cited uh, reason why DMSA should not be given to children because there was a t statistically significant um, decrease in growth for the children who were given DMSA. So they were, um, the children given DMSA had grown 0.25 centimeters less than those who had been given placebo over 12 months. Um, and over 12 months following up, they had grown 0.35 less um, over 34 months of follow-up. So whether it's clinically significant is another thing, but it was found to be statistically significant. So you'll often hear that DMSA will stunt the growth of children, um, and it doesn't change IQ scores, which is what they found here. Um, but DMSA could um, have other benefits, such as in it decreases uh, blood lead levels, but also can change blood pressure um, for children also. And it's ironic in the study where um, they're measuring uh, lead and treating lead, they also gave a multivitamin that was contaminated with lead. Um, so I pulled this article and each lead multivitamin tablet that they administered to the children had 35 micrograms of lead per tablet. And just as a reference, the EPA action level for lead in water is 15 micrograms per liter. <laughs>